I'm sorry I'm late. I've had a hell of a day. Uh, and it gets better. We can't find Michael Bisping. What fighter has been more stood up at press conferences than George St. Pierre? The answer is zero. Anyway, on a positive note, George St. Pierre is back. And when we find Michael Bisping, he's going to fight at a certain date. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, let's get GSP out here. George St. Pierre before we can get him to fight. Obviously, he has to get him to the USADA program. There's a lot of different things that have to happen. Once we, once we know where George is, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll set the date. I'm hoping and aiming for this, you know, and probably in July. That's, in, in a perfect world, I would love to see this fight happen on International Fight Week. Also, thanks, Dan. George, uh, obviously, welcome back. For three years, you've been answering questions about coming back and, you know, did you want to fight again and all those things. Why was now the right time, and how much of it had to do with, you know, your thoughts of Michael Bisping and how maybe you match up with him? It, it was a lot more complicated than that. Uh, the landscape in mixed martial art changed all the time, um, and we had up, up, ups and downs and discussion. It's been a long time, a long process. Um, I want to say thanks to the, the UFC, thanks to my management team uh, to make that possible, and. Uh, well, I, I, at one point after UFC 206 uh, Toronto, I, I kind of lost hope, and then it bounced back, and they announced me the great news. So uh, I'm very happy to be here. Welcome back! We saw on social media that you got a chance to step into the octagon backstage and kind of feel it out a little bit. What was that feeling like for you back then? It feels great. I, I I'm so excited right now. Yesterday I took the took the picture and and I just. Like the, the company has changed, but to, to, to come back, it, it's, I, I feel like I re rejuvenated. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thanks, George. And just quickly, if I could for Dan, understand why you put this fight together. I mean, this is a super fight. It's amazing to have George St. Pierre back, but can't deny that Yoel Romero is the rightful number one contender in the division right now, right? Yeah. So, what do you do with Yoel right now? I hope he doesn't kill me. You know, I'm, I'm going uh, to duck and dodge him for as long as I can. No, we're going to take care of him. We'll obviously take care of, uh, of UL. Um, and, uh, you know, the, George is coming back. It's not like George has a lot of time. George wanted, to, wanted this fight. Mike wanted this fight. I'm sure the fans want to see this fight, so we did it. I'll take care of UL. I'll, I'll handle it. And just last thing for me, Danny, you touched on it. Uh, I know we're here to talk about this fight, but the news this morning, losing the co event. What are your plans right now uh, with Tony Ferguson and Khabib Nurmagomedov? Do you want to put that fight back together? Do you want to do something next? For Tony? What, what, what's the idea? It's just, you know, it's, it's obviously a huge blow, and, and I, I don't know right now. We, we got to get through tomorrow night and, uh, you know, do the fight, and then I'll figure out what's going to go on with those guys. George. Right here. Hey, hey. how you doing, George? Good to see you. Um, what ultimately happened in the gym that convinced you that you, you were capable of coming back and being the old GSP? I'm not going to be the old G G GSP. If I come back as the same Georges St. Pierre I used to be when I, when I was very successful, I'm going to have a very bad night, the night of the fight. If I come back, it's because I am. My trainer are, and my training partner are all convinced that I'm a better version than I was when I used to compete. I believe right now I reached the perfect peak of athleticism, knowledge, and wisdom as a fighter, and I'm going to prove it to everyone. Okay. And how important was it for you to be fully satisfied with what the UFC is doing with its anti-doping program? Well, it, nothing is ever perfect, and, and, um, uh, but it's much better. And it's much better than most of the sport, uh, of course, uh, in professional sport. But the, th the problem is why I was so insistent on that is we don't play games, we fight. 
a win or a loss sometimes has a, an effect on people's livings. And even sometimes they don't come back the same as they were, you know? So it's very important. This is a very important matter that we, ta that we needed to take seriously. I'm glad the UFC took the initiative to, to get USADA to do the job. Thank you, George. George, is there uh, something about going to 185 right now that interested you that maybe wasn't uh, uh, possible for you three years ago? Because we used to talk before you left about possibly coming up to fight Anderson Silva. Is there something about the comeback, maybe getting a little older, the way your body's functioning that makes you, uh, you know, better for 185 now than previously? I'm, I'm always the same weight. I walk around between 185, 190. Uh, actually, even some light, some, some 155ers guys are bigger than me. I'm an average size uh, welterweight. Um, it's a huge, huge task. And fighting business, it's like the stock market. Some guys, sometimes their stock is high, some guys their stock is low, and it's a question of timing. When I used to fight as a welterweight, I had a crazy lineup waiting for me. And I had injuries, I blew up my ACL back then and they were waiting for me. And the opportunity for a fight, if, I, if you come up and fight, it's not really the fight that, that is dangerous. The fight is always dangerous, but it's the preparation because you need to have training partner that makes the, the environment representative of what you're gonna have. So you have to train with heavier guy. It's not necessarily that the guys are better, it's the guys are heavier and freak accident, freak accident as are more likely to happen. Right now, I'm, I don't hold the belt. Nobody is waiting for me. I can do whatever I want. It was a perfect timing. I wanted to make a big boom in my comeback. And like I said, it's like the stock market. Right now, the guy who has the highest stock right now, it's Michael Bisping. And it was a perfect timing for, for, for me to do it. Do you, do you see yourself at this point staying at 185, win or lose, or could you possibly go back to 170? I don't know what's, I, I don't know. Uh, what's gonna happen? Like I said, we don't know who's who's up and down. It fluctuates so so fast. Uh, I have a general idea of a, the. I have a general long-term goal and a general direction where I wanna where, where I wanna go. I'm 36 years old. I don't have a lot of a lot of fight left, but I wanna make as big as possible. So everything I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the biggest fight as possible, and I wanna make. What gives a fuck? No one gives a fuck, George. Everybody, I'm sorry I'm late. Dana, my apologies. George, my apologies. Um, Everybody gives a fuck that you're late. Sit down. No, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, I, I was outside the encore. The car was at the win. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think Vegas got the best out of you, unfortunately. Yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm going to get the fucking best out of you. So shut the fuck up. Now you Listen, won't. Now you won't. You're talking about being a fucking welterweight. You are a welterweight, okay? I'm a middleweight. I can't wait to fucking square up against you. Stand up. Stand up and look at the size of me and look at the size of you. Go back to fucking Canada. That's all, that's all you have on, on me. That's all you have. No, it's not. I've got a lot more yes. than that, pal. I got skill, the, uh, skill, fighting IQ, athleticism. Here's the guy. Here, everything the guy. is on my side. Oh, is it really? Um, um, height, reach, good looks. Fucking accent, the jab, the punch, the kick, everything. George, listen, while you were away, because you were so scared of everybody taking steroids, I was man enough to still be fighting those guys. You went away, you went and fucking chased aliens. I don't know what you did. No one gives a fuck where you were or what you did. You're coming back, the sport is a different place, game over. I think you should shut, shut up. You're embarrassing yourself right now. Are, are you still drunk right now? Are you still drunk or what? What's no, going on? No, but I'm going to go. <laughs> what, I, the, what is going on with him? I'm going to go have a Your beer. voice is kind of, what, what is happening with you? My God, are you, are you LT? Are you okay? Is it is up, uh, up here? Is it, hey, you hey, get hey, hit hey, too much or what? Hey, hey, George, I'll go out on an all night fucking bender and still beat you, pal. I'll fucking, I'll, I won't even train. Look at the state here, you little fucking midget. <laughs> Uh, George, just one more question. Uh, I know another thing about you coming back was the, uh, the debate about the Reebok deal. You've got the deal with Under Armour. Has that been resolved? And if so, will you represent Under Armour in the cage or Reebok or how did that work out? Well, it's, it's a little bit like, for example, like Tom Brady, I guess. Uh, 
uh, NFL is with Nike and he's wearing Under Armour to do the promotion outside of the, the NFL. So it will be a, something arranged uh, similar, similarly, I guess. If you're a real fighter, you don't give a fuck about Under Armour or this or that. I've been in the same place the entire time, fighting the best in the world. Simple as that. I, I, I don't need sponsors as an excuse not to fight. I don't need a reason not to fight. I fight all the time. That's what I do. I'm a fighter. That's why I got the fucking belt, George. Hey, George, where's your belt? Where's your fucking belt? You don't have one. The sport moved on, buddy. The sport moved on. Well, I, I could have stole. I could have stole one while you were uh, out in Vegas drinking. Stop it, please. You're embarrassed. Hey, you're, you're saying I'm embarrassing myself. Please stop it. You're embarrassing yourself. Next question, uh, George. George, we know you wanted to fight uh, in Toronto. Is is fighting in Canada a priority for you at this point? I don't. I don't care where the the octagon will be set. I'm, I'm here to do a job. Is to uh, and it's got to be to to beat up that that drunk man right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why is the onus on me being fucking drunk? What's that going to do with anything? I've been drunk throughout my entire fucking career. <laughs> Danny will testify to that. Why does that make this fight any fucking different? Why does that matter? I'm English. <laughs> I'm in fucking Vegas. I'm going to fight. Hey, when is the fight, George? When's the fight? When do you want to fight? Because I'll fight right now. <laughs> I'll fight right now, motherfucker. That's the difference between you and me. So you look at me. You, you don't scare me not even one bit. Not, not even one bit. I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> no, no, you really page. don't. I'm not trying to scare you. But here's the fact. I'm a real fighter. I'm a real fighter. You're an athlete. And good for you. You're a very, very good athlete. But you're an athlete. I'm a fighter. Fact. Next question. Yeah, oh, yeah, don't worry, that pussy will get it next. Yeah, question for George. Obviously, you were previously fighting at welterweight 170. What kind of changes in your training are you going to make to uh, get up to 185? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make some adjustment. Of course, the, try to gain on some weight. But I'm re realis realistic, realistically speaking, I want... I, I, won't have to, I won't be able to get uh, so much bigger. I'm going to try to put on some muscle mass, get prepared efficiently, come out, and uh, you know, do, do my job. You know? I just wish Michael Bisping would have come out with a different song than all the guys that I've fought before. You know? Oh, you're just an athlete, blah, blah, blah. You're not a fighter. Uh, I, my journey in mixed martial art is more than, than, than legit. I've been, I've been at incredible obstacle. You know, I, I've fought guys, I had to come back. Uh, Carlos Candid and everybody, I, I, I've, I've fought Hendrix, everybody, BJ Penn won. I, I came back like I, and I fought and I, sh and I showed true heart. And uh, that's why I'm here today. I'm not a, an easy target and my journey is honorable. So you're talking about beating BJ Penn, a featherweight. He's a featherweight. I'm a middleweight. I'm a legit middleweight. I used to fight a light heavyweight. I was 15 and I was light heavyweight, pal. So, you know. I mean, you are a very, very good fighter, George. I respect you very, very much. But at the end of the day, there's a reason why they have weight classes. It's as simple as that. And I respect you coming back, but I know why you've picked me. You think I'm an easy fight, just like Anderson did, just like Luke Rockhold did when I knocked him out in the first round, just like everybody does. Yeah, fucking Luke Rockhold. Um, <laughs> just like everybody does. And time and time again, I proved them wrong. So this is the guy, the greatest of all time, didn't want to face Anderson. Didn't want to face Anderson when he was the man, but he comes out of retirement to face me. Yeah, real good fighter. Yeah, see you outside, dickhead. Yeah, uh, Mike, the, the fight's been announced for a few days now. What's kind of the reaction been like from people talking to you, giving you kind of feedback on it? Um, I'm, Everybody's excited about the fight. I mean, myself, I'm very, very excited. Um, you know, George is, you know, listen, I respect George. I respect what he's done inside the UFC. Of course I do. You know, and he's a fantastic martial artist. He's an incredible athlete. Um, I think uh, this is going to get a lot of interest, of course. I mean, George was always a big, big star in the UFC. So, of course, I wanted to fight the guy. Um, yeah, everybody's excited. It's an easy payday. Let's cut the bullshit. It's a fucking easy payday. So thank you very much, George. Yeah, just one last one last for Michael. Um, you know, a lot of people are saying that the legitimate number one contender is Yoel Romero. So? 
If you're your Romero right now, what do you do? Do you take another fight to uh, really get yourself? You if know, he's so position? good, then just keep beating people. Because I'll tell you what, George doesn't have a style to hurt me. I can show you a text message to Dana right now. I said, George will not hurt me. In six weeks after this fight, I'll fight Yoel Romero. Correct, Dana? Correct. So, Yoel, sit on the fucking stool, do whatever you want to do, shit your pants, whatever it may be. I'll be here. <laughs> uh, next question. question. <laughs> A question for George over here. Hey, George, welcome back. You've, you've said in the past that if you ever moved up to 185 when there was talk of the Anderson Silva fight, you said, if I ever move up, I'm not going back down. That's what you said three, four years ago. Do you still feel the same way, or are you open to you know, fighting at 185 and then, of course, going back down in the future if that opportunity presents itself? I don't look back, look past Michael Bisping right now, and uh, I have a long-term goals. I know approximately, roughly, where, which direction I want to take, but I'm 30, I'm going to be 36 years old when the fight happens, and I want to make the biggest fight possible. You know, I want to make history, and right now I'm focusing on the, on the short-term goals, which is this guy. Can you tell us a little That's more? all matter on that. Can you tell us a little more about these long-term goals? No. Nothing. No, he can't tell you anything. That's the whole point of a press conference, George. You're supposed to fucking talk. Tell them something, please. You haven't been here for four years, but he can't tell you anything. Why, been... can't, you, why can't you tell them anything? Four years, George, come on, this is your moment. Let's go, tell them. Well, well, <laughs> go on, go on, go on. No, no. There we I'm, go. I'm, I'm gonna, there I'm, we I'm go. gonna be. It's like they're stuck, right? Up and down. You don't know who's up, who's, who's, who will be up and down. I'm gonna beat this guy. Then after we'll we'll see what's the next big challenge. Okay. And you kind of had the pick of the litter. You had an option at 170, 185, some super fights. Yeah. Just hearing what he's saying to you and kind of how he's acting towards you, is there any part of you that regrets giving Michael this opportunity? Huh. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm very happy. It's not no, an, no, no. an opportunity. The, I'm the going to hurt him. I'm going to hurt him real bad. Real, real the bad. The more I talk, the more he wants to punch me in the face, Ariel. So, okay. you know, good luck with that. And just one more for you, George. Yesterday, Tyron Woodley said that the reason why you're fighting Bisping is because you don't want to fight him, that you're avoiding him. Did you seriously consider waiting to see? I know you have a relationship with Wonder Boy. Did you, did you kind of wait, want to wait and see what happened in this fight on Saturday and maybe go after your old title? I, I don't know. Like I said, it depends what's going to happen. I'm focusing on him right now. Okay. That's all matter to me. The world ends after the fight. Then after, it's, an, it's a new journey. That he comes thinks up. I'm an easier fight. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. We'll, we'll, we'll see. You think we'll I'm see. an easier fight? We'll see, we'll see how it goes. He's going to the easy pickings. You are a welterweight, but you're going to step up a weight class because he looks like a legend. No, because he's a pussy and he wants an easier fight. Guess what? You're fucking going to find out you're wrong, pal. You're wrong. We'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. Okay, good talk. Okay, and, and Dana, just one for you. When you say that you're going to take care of Yoel Romero, what do you mean by that? Can you elaborate? What does that mean? That's between me and Yoel Romero. Well, you, there is Thanks the, for asking. That's between us. No, I know, but there is the precedent with Carlos Condit and GSP where... Is there? There's is, really is that, not a precedent. There's, there's different scenarios and different situations. But is Don't that worry what about what Yoel Romero is going to make. Me and Yoel will take care of that. All right. Fair enough. Thank you. Hey, uh, question for George. Right here in front of you. Hey, welcome back. Um, I do want to have you address Michael Bisping's claim, if, if you don't mind, that he, he believes... You're picking him because he's an easy, he's a, he's a beatable champion. He happens to be a guy at the middleweight, holding that middleweight title, and he thinks that you see as an, as an easy fight. Does that, what is your reaction to him saying that? No, no, he's, he's wrong on that. Um, I would say there's different kind of fighter. There's fighter that rely only purely on their uh, talent, and uh, they fight in a very elegant way. But most of these guys, sometimes when they fight, when they get cracked, they go down, it's, it opens the floodgate, and they never come back. Michael is a different kind of fighter. He's a fighter that doesn't only rely on his talent. He's a hard worker. He's a grinder. And I admire that. Outside of his attitude, I admire that, his work ethic. Because no matter what you throw at him, he's going to come back. He's been putting, put down before, but he always stood up. He always came back. No matter which obstacle I'm going to put, he's going to try to cross it. 
So I'm going to have to take him out of order during the fight, and I'm aware of it. I know you don't want to talk too much about your long-term plans, but what are the chances, if you do win this fight, that you would want to defend the title? I mean, would you feel any kind of responsibility to defend the title, or at this point in your career, you're just looking for the biggest fights, yeah. regardless of time? We'll see what's going to happen. It's like I said, fighting is like the stock market right now. Some stuff, it's fluctuate, you know? Fluctuate. Right. <laughs> it, fl it fluctuate. Sometimes some guy, are, their stock is very high. Sometimes they're very, low, very low. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen uh, in, in, in a few months. It depends on every, every, everybody has a, a different journey. And you talk about like the title shot, Yoel Romero. There's a lot of guys, like uh, unfortunately, in this situation. And I've been there before. When I was waiting for my revenge against Matt Hughes, I had to go through Dave Strasser, uh, Jason Miller, Frank Triggs, Sean Shark, BJ Penn, then I had my revenge. I had to go through uh, like five fights before that. You know, it's the same, same thing. Damian Maya is in the same situation. Khabib is in the same situation. The, and the list goes on. You know, uh, I have an opportunity and, 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 I, and I can't miss it. And it's the biggest fight possible, possibly that I can do right now, and that's why I'm doing it right now. And it's a great, it's a big challenge. I don't, I don't take nobody lightly, and I'm, I'm gonna prove it the, the day of the fight. And just so you know, not to jump in and def like I'm defending George here, but at the time that this deal was made, when when me and his guys were doing this deal, we wanted him to come back. We wanted to announce it. We wanted a title fight. Bisping was the only guy who was available at the time. The Woodley fight was already happening with Thompson, and you don't know how those guys are going to come out of this fight. Who's going to win? Is one of them going to get hurt? Does somebody blow something? Does something bad happen to one of the guys? We, we don't know those things. So how am I going to bring George St. Pierre back unless I have an absolute positive fight for him? And Bisping was ready. Bisping wanted the fight, so it was the fight to make. For, for you, Dana... Is there any kind of hesitation booking someone into a title fight not knowing if they're going to have, you know, uh, a desire to defend the title after they win it? Is there any kind of concern when you're booking a title fight like that? We've talked about that, and George said he has plans. He's just not saying I'm here today. It's not like we went into this 185-pound championship going, oh, well, let's see what happens, you know? Obviously, if Bisping wins, Bib Bisping said he'll turn right around and fight Romero. If George wins, he has a plan. He's just not willing to tell you guys what it is right now, but he is willing to do many things. Obviously, we wouldn't be here today, and I wouldn't be in this position right now not knowing what George St. Pierre Please tell everybody your plan, George. <laughs> tell everybody your plan. Come on. All these fine people here. Please, come on. So that's the truth. That's the my reality. Plan, my plan is to kick your butt. We'll see after that. <clears throat> hey, uh, Michael, you, you like to give you all a hard time, but... Any, any sympathy any sympathy whatsoever? You're a guy who waited a very, very long time for a UFC title shot. Do you have any sympathy for him that he's getting passed up? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Yoel is... Uh, he's, he's an amazing fighter. It's as simple as that. He really is. He's a physical specimen. He's a great wrestler. He's got knockout power. Of course, you know, I mean, he is the rightful number one contender. I don't make the fights. I accept fights. Simple as that. George does, and that's the difference. When has Dana ever called me and I've turned the fight down? Never. So, Yoel... We'll get it next. Simple as that. Because I'll beat George. I will beat George. Everybody knows that. George, good luck, buddy. I wish you the best. I respect you. I respect your camp. And you see that stupid fucking little smug look on your face there. Like you've got some, like you've got some plan. Like you know something we don't know. What do you know that I don't know? Those, a, a lot of things. <laughs> you fucking lizard. Um... So, yeah, so listen, Yoel, I plan on beating George, of course. Of course, there's two horses in every race. Of course, George plans on beating me. If I win, I will fight Yoel in a quick turnaround because he deserves to fight. You know, simple as that. <clears throat> I'm going to take one more question. Go ahead. Uh, it's going to be in French for George. I'm, I'm going to ask it in English for everyone here. Yep, thank uh, you. George with McGregor, John Jones, and Ronda Rousey out of competition right now. You, you talk about stock market. Do you feel you have the highest stock right now and you're here to kind of save the UFC in the short term? Please, uh, can, if you can answer in French. Je pense que je suis pas dans la, dans la course encore tant aussi longtemps que j'ai pas montré aux gens ce que je vaux. Parce que j'ai été à l'extérieur de la compétition pendant trop longtemps. Donc, c'est mon, mon combat de retour qui va vraiment faire, faire voir ma vraie valeur. I said I feel I'm not in the, in, in the stock right now. I don't have no value because it's going to be my 
fight, my, my fight return that will definite my value. And it's going to be higher than him. And, and Dana, if, if I can have your take on this, do you feel easier to kind of save you guys in the short term? Or? Well, you know, I mean, that's, that's kind of a goofy way to put it. But, uh, you know, if we didn't come to a deal, we didn't come to a deal. You know, the UFC is going to keep rolling and making fights and doing what we do. Um, you know, George and I got together in Vegas, which started the whole thing. Then he got two very capable people to come in uh, and, and meet with me. And, and we got a deal done. So if we didn't, the fight wouldn't be happening. So um, I'm happy. I'm ob obviously very happy that George is back. I'm happy that George is happy to be back. Um, I questioned for a long time if he really wanted to fight. And after we, we, we had a dinner and a breakfast, I, you know, I was on board. And I believe that he did. So here we are. Uh, my last question, if I can. Uh, you talked about Freddie Roach and Nick Khan, who stepped in. George, in French, please, can you talk about their involvement in you making this deal done with the UFC? Yeah, the, the, uh, I talked to Freddie. Nick Khan uh, came, make the deal. But it was uh, like all teamwork, um, CAA, LB3I. It was all done with the team. It was a long process. And of course, the, the extra help, uh, Freddie, Nick Khan, uh, it did a, a, a great plus. And uh, I'm very happy it worked out all uh, for the best of everybody. Ah oui, il um, y a eu l'aide de, de Freddy Roach et de Nick Khan, um, mais ça a, été un, ça a été quelque chose qui a duré pendant très longtemps. Donc, euh, je veux remercier aussi l'équipe de CAA, euh, LB3I, euh, de toute de tout mon équipe euh, de gérance, parce qu'ils ont fait un travail remarquable. Ça a été un travail d'équipe. Thank you guys for coming. Sorry he was late. I'll square these guys off and uh, for photo op.